Welcome to the AFR Saints channel, where we provide you daily content on your favorite team, the New Orleans Saints. Do us a favor and hit that subscribe button. Be sure to leave your comments below and smash that like button. Who that? We're talking about a rookie minicamp right now, so um, we're, we're like in the very infant stages of what we're what we're doing. We've progressed a lot more uh, with the vet players that we've had in here for the last uh, four weeks. So, uh, look, we're making progress. We got a long way to go, but we're making progress. Dennis Allen after rookie minicamp. Jeff Nowak from WWL was out there. Good enough to join us for a couple of minutes. How are you, man? I'm doing good, man. I mean, I'm still bitter about the whole LSU debacle over the weekend, but uh, you know, I'm, I'm getting better every day. Hey, man. Could have gone without you bringing that up, dude. Like, I was excited to hear about <laughs> Taliesin Fuanga, how Spencer Rattler look, and now you had to go just make me throw up in my mouth a little bit. Um, all right, let me purge that for a minute. We'll move on. No, bro, we all feel the same way. Uh, hey, let's let's just start at the top, man. Taliesin Fuanga, what was your what was your most immediate takeaway? Yeah, you know, it's, it's it's tough to get a really good look at the offensive line, defensive line when there's no pads on and they're kind of running these milk toast schemes and whatever. But, you know, it, it, the big thing for him is he's getting work at left tackle. And the, the immediate reaction to that is like, why? You know, he's a right tackle. Why is he working on the left side? And I think, you know, my takeaway is they're preparing for the worst in that, you know, they're going to try to put Trevor Penning at left tackle. If that works out, great, and I think you're going to shift Fuanga back over to the right side. But this happens to be the, the time of year where none of the guys that are really in the mix at left tackle are there at minicamp. So this is just a good opportunity, or rookie minicamp, rather. So this is a good opportunity for him to work on the left side. They can see how he looks on the left side so that if they do end up in a situation where you know they have to kind of break glass in case of emergency and move him over there, mm. they've seen it. Uh, and, but otherwise, you know, I think he's, He's got a good approach. I think he's a good locker room guy. You know, he's, he's gigantic. You know, when you stand next to him, you can really get him to see uh, an appreciation for how big this dude really is. Um, but, you know, I think he's he's on the right track. I think he's going to be a week one starter. And whether that's on the right side or the left side, I think Saints fans are going to be happy when, uh, when they see him out there. Um. What you talked about the the best case or worst case? Who else are they preparing to play at left tackle? That's a good question. Um, right now, the only real options would be Fuanga, Trevor Penning, maybe Oli Udo is a veteran they brought in. Yeah. Um, but right now, that's kind of a mix, and there's a chance you go in the draft and I'm sorry, you go on free agency and find a veteran closer to training camp. But right now, I think they are. Still banking on Trevor Penning kind of developing this new coaching staff. Uh, John Benton is in there now. Doug Marone is out the door. So you're hoping that, you know, maybe that coaching can resonate a little more. They talked several times about how they kind of view his second season as his rookie season because he dealt with all the injuries as a rookie. He wasn't able to kind of go through that process of a full off season. That's not the case this year. He is healthy. Um, and th and that's the thing. Like people are going to look at it and say, "Oh, this means they don't trust Trevor Penning." Right now, it's tough to say that. Now, if you get to OTAs, if you get to minicamp, and he is there, and you are still seeing Fuaga get those first team reps, then that's a pretty strong statement about how they feel about where Trevor is. But right now, I think he is the plan, and uh, we're going to have to see how that pans out. Um, Jeff Noak's with us on Twitter at Jeff underscore Noak. You can give him a follow. Talking some Saints rookie minicamp. Okay, the one that everybody wants to ask about is Spencer Rattler. So, all right, um, is he ready to be the starter week one? How we do, how we looking there? <laughs> so, yeah. So, before good. I get a bunch of angry tw uh, tweets, tongue firmly planted in cheek. All right, I was joking. Anyway, all right, go ahead, Jeff. Sorry. Uh, no, I, I understand. Uh, no, I mean people are excited about Spencer Rattler, and and for good reason. You know, I. I think when you look at Spencer and the, the investment they made in him, you hear a lot of, well, he's a fifth-round pick. Why would you be excited about a fifth-round pick? I think in reality you're talking about more of a second- or third-round pick. They just didn't have one. Um, and he ended up dropping for some inexplicable reasons, some explicable reasons, right? You know, a lot of the teams that may have taken him on day two drafted a quarterback in the top 12. So you're not going to take a second- or third-round quarterback when you invested the 12th overall pick in Bo Nix. For example, um, 
And so you, you look at Spencer and, you know, he, the interesting thing is he was out there with Kellen Mond as a tryout player. He was the only other quarterback at rookie minicamp. And it kind of served as a pretty solid control for one of those guys looked like a guy with starting quarterback caliber traits. So starting quarterback ceiling. And one of those guys looked like a guy with a backup quarterback ceiling. And it was very easy to tell who was who. And obviously mm-hmm. Spencer, you know, with the arm talent that he has, which is legitimate. I mean, you're not making this up when you say, you look at him throw the ball and he is among the best you can see out there in terms of arm talent. There's other questions, you know, the size isn't ideal at the quarterback position. You know, you, you worry about how he can grasp the offense, that sort of thing. But from what we saw at rookie minicamp, you know, there's no, I don't think you can win anything at rookie minicamp, but you can certainly lose something. You can certainly raise some red flags really quickly. And I don't think he did any of that. I think he handled himself really well. He, he commanded, the offense, you didn't see them kind of going in and out of the huddle, having to re, re-huddle because they got the play call messed up or anything like that. That's a good start. Um, I think Clint's schemes are a little simpler than we've seen in the past for the Saints. The verbiage is a lot shorter. There's a lot fewer words being said when you're calling mm-hmm. plays. Um, and I think that's helpful for a rookie as he picks up an offense. So, no, I mean, I think you're, you're talking about a project guy, but he does have a higher ceiling than I think you would see typically with a day three quarterback pick. And, you know, you're going to want to see him develop and kind of learn this year, maybe next year. He, this year, he needs to do enough to stay on the roster, yeah. right? He needs to compete with Jake Hayner. Maybe he can win that backup job. Maybe he ends up being that kind of emergency third quarterback that you have inactive on game days because you have a little bit more trust in Jake Hayner. But that's kind of that's the question you have right now, is he's going to get to training camp, OTAs, mini camp. And he's going to be in a competition to see, okay, who's the backup? Who's going to be there? Who can we trust if Derek, for example, gets hurt again like he did last year? And who, can, who do you trust more to go in and actually go win that game? And, and right now I think he's on a pretty even playing field with Jake because of the new offense because there's really no advantage for Jake coming in with, with understanding of this system the way you might typically have seen. So I, I like Spencer. I think um, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be interesting to see how he kind of molds into that room Anytime you're a high-end college quarterback and suddenly you're the backup, suddenly you have to kind of humble yourself. There's a, there's a wild card there. I don't know if everyone handles that the same. But he's saying all the right things, so I think that's a good start. Did um, anything else strike you, uh, takeaway-wise, good or bad, any player? Like if I said, what, what was maybe the, the biggest takeaway? What was something that caught your eye? Uh, I think Bob Means was okay. surprising in a good way. You know, I wasn't sure what to expect from him i didn't watch a ton of pit tape right you know it's not a and now we're not in acc country but you know he moves a lot better than i was expecting he's a bigger guy but he he's got kind of a grace about him uh he seems to have an early connection with spencer they they hooked up a couple times i thought that you know and, and his attitude is really you know kind of i think effervescent is a word you know he just has a personality that um really draws you in so he's a guy that i'm excited to watch as this offense kind of expands um I, I thought jermaine jackson had a intriguing day um he's you know we 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 all remember with deontay hardy i think he yeah. might actually be smaller than deontay hardy <laughs> which is kind of crazy but they have similar builds right he's five seven he's the type of guy you kind of lose in traffic um but you know they, they hooked up for a couple nice plays i think in in the right situation where you utilize him in in the correct ways he could be a really fun player to watch uh, I think he's probably a practice squad guy, but when you're a UDFA, being a practice squad guy is not is is not a bad thing. That's that's kind of a win, right? Um, and you know, as you go forward, uh, Kyle Sheets is another guy that I I think is intriguing, but personally, I think he's a tight end. I don't think he, you know you watch him next to Dallin Hulker, and they're the same size, like they're they're the same exact frame. It's just that one's fifteen pounds heavier to play tight end. Okay. Um, so, you know, he's a guy that I think will end up kind of being in that mix toward the end. I, I don't think any of the tight ends really separated themselves. Um, it's obviously early. We didn't see all three days of practice, so I, I don't really know what happened on Friday or Sunday in terms of that position, but no one really stood out to me there. I know Dallin is a guy that people are excited to see, and uh, I'm interested to see how he kind of works his way in as the OTAs get here uh, later in the month. Man, it 
never stops in the NFL calendar. Uh, rookie made a camp in the rearview mirror, head toward OTAs. He's Jeff Nowak, on, uh, at Jeff underscore Nowak, if you want to give him a follow there. Jeff, always appreciate it, man. Thanks so much. Yeah, man, thanks for having me. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Please leave your comments. I love to interact. And be sure to hit the red subscribe button below.